Oh, it's recording. Ja vel, jeg har med å se hvordan dette henger. Andre utgår av drømme står over. Nå er jeg her med meg en munk, rett og slett, som er våre tre måneder, fire måneder. Tre og fire måneder? Tre. Tre måneder oppe i The Mountains, forbi Byglandsfjord. Han sitter der og mediterer. Så han var, han var nede her et par ganger når det var noe ekstraordinært og skyping og kommunikasjon med familiemedlemmer og sånn. Og nå sitter vi og venter på at bussen hans skal ta hva han kommer seg ned til byen i morgen på. Tidlig klokka fem. Så jeg kan om morgen og flyet ned til Tyskland. Så jeg tenkte vi vil ta og høre litt hvordan livet fra under munkekappet, for å si det sånn. Vel, hei Cedric. Takk for å komme, og takk for din gode kompani. Det har vært en veldig honor å bli bedre med deg denne vinteren, og siden jeg har vært her oppe i mountains, og også siden du har kommet ned her. Wow, hva en ride! Men det er en veldig ride! Men det er en veldig ride! What is your mountain perspective now? Uh, what were your mission when you set out to do this? Quite unusual thing to be meditating for a whole winter. <laughs> My mission? Yeah. What do you mean? No, I mean, I mean um, this was probably just not something that just occurred to you while you were out shopping. That, oh, I want to go up uh, this winter and just stay meditating in Norway. Uh, I suppose there must have been some uh, why meditating in winter in Norway, you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, because I wanted to meditate in retreat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never did this in Norway outside like this. And uh, I thought I can use the winter even to stay outside. I did in the winter in a hut, you know, in a, in a house or something like this, but uh, not in the tent. Yeah, you, you slept in a tent. Yes. So I wanted to try this in a tent so I can be uh, more in connection with the nature, like I like it during the winter and I wanted to see if this works and it works <laughs> yeah, it works you've been telling us uh, uh, you've gone through uh, many different uh, meditation programs yes uh, well, uh, well uh, can you explain how these uh, meditation programs works for people that in Buddhism you mean? yeah or in general uh, in general well you have different uh, spiritual disciplines or even religions, or philosophies, and then you have their their disciplines. So it's built from like school grades, and it starts with the basics, and then the on the basics comes the more complex. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean that it's more profound, but more complex maybe. And uh, but your insight or your spiritual discipline then becomes more profound, like. Uh, becoming a better and better schoolboy. <laughs> <laughs> the, have you been using nature as a teacher then? Have you been, uh, uh, no, uh, nature... Well, why use nature? Firstly, nature balances you. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, when you're out in nature, you're alone. This is actually the most important thing, mm -hmm. and um, and for me personally, also nature, uh, yeah, balancing would be a good word. Like balances me or inspires me, mm -hmm. brings me closer to what uh, I feel maybe is the truth or something like this. Nature is like an inspiration for this. So for me, being in nature. Is like being closer to myself. That's why I like very nature very much for that, mm -hmm. or in general, yes. And um, but, uh, yeah, despite uh, your young years, uh, you have already been monk for a very long time. Uh, what set you out on this? Uh, I mean, it's an epic journey in my mind. Uh, uh, well, I didn't plan to become a monk, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was because 
uh, well, my teacher, uh, he's a monk, and then he proposed me to be a monk, and when I understood what it means, but this was quite some time after the proposal, I actually felt the great, not only the calling, I felt this is what I've looked for in my life. Not becoming a monk, but the path of, the, of uh, what a monk does. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't care being a monk or not. Mm -hmm. But the path of uh, what the monk does, this I care. Mm -hmm. And uh, my teacher suggested to me that being a monk is the best way, which I follow up to now. Uh, but now, not only of, out of conviction of my teacher, but even now it has become my old conviction that up to now being a monk is the best way. Mm -hmm. If I feel the best way to follow this uh, calling or what I feel uh, in life is the, the best way to live, if you would not be a monk, I would not be a monk. But up to now, it's been to be a monk. sign up to this? Uh, you go to a temple, you are associated well, with in Buddhism temple. it's like uh, there are different tradition, and the different tra Buddhist tradition differ according to the country where they come from and each country has uh, different procedures for how to become a monk mm -hmm. but uh, basically what they have in common is yes you go to a monastery or um, monks or nuns for a woman mm -hmm. and then you sign up and uh, some, some tradition you have some probation time uh, for even becoming a novice uh, some don't have a probation time for becoming a novice, you become a novice mm -hmm. and, but what all tradition have, have in common is that you become a novice and as a novice again you have a different length of time according to tradition and then you become a full, fully ordained or fully ordained uh, monk or nun in some tradition this, uh, the priests have got lost for higher ordination they stay uh, novice but this is technical mm -hmm. but basically this is how you sign up I think it's uh, like a Christian church mm. that could be um, I'm, I'm, I'm always I'm always a bit flabbergasted by how little I've been to the church myself over the years despite being quite uh, yes but you also have to know that uh, for the Christi Christianity like in Europe the tradition of uh, the uh, monastic tradition and also actually the spiritual tradition as such of spiritual contemplation and practice, I guess, of Christianity is really, sadly, quite uh, small. Mm. Yeah, it's and been, it's, uh, uh, away almost, this is another thing I have to say. I think if as a young boy I would have met a brilliant Christian teacher and he would spoken, have spoken truth to my heart. You can bet I become a Christian monk. Oh, it's so sure. Of course, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree with you on that. I so, think, yeah. uh, you've been very uh, lucky to uh, at all have met somebody in your yes, life yes. that have been, uh, been able to talk this you is true, clearly this is and true. inspire you. I mean. mm. But in, another thing for spirituality. What I understand up to now is that the teacher chooses the student. Mm -hmm. Not it seems as if the student chooses the teacher, but in reality it's the opposite. Yeah, how do you mean? Uh, it's mean the the only thing which I feel comes from the student is the calling, and then the condition appear mm -hmm. for you to meet the teacher. It will just happen. So, but that you really uh, this as far as I know also happened to other people I talk to who have then the real master-student relationship or something, it will be kind of the master who sets the first main imprint of uh, the student-master relationship, mm -hmm. of course, sets the big first, how you say, ground stone for now we have the master-student relationship. This comes from the master. It's not the student who will say, mm -hmm. now we have a master-student relationship, you teach me. It doesn't work that way, you know, it must go the other way. So this is also my experience. This yeah, this I can recognize because when I went to art school, uh, and I, I in Oslo I was new in the big city and uh, I was quite enjoying the school and uh, stuff. But uh, I was like, oh, uh, what do I do? What do I do? And we had some s s stipend uh, competition. We could win a money prize uh, from the teacher. And I, I came up with a, I thought it was a half good idea, but the, the teacher liked it. 
and uh, I won the prize and, uh, huh. and I suddenly got thinking, uh, oh, I can actually make money doing art. There was a, the, 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 um, I don't know if that is, the, okay, I, maybe it's cheapen it by taking monetary rewards as a inspiration for taking your work further as we are talking about being a monk now but uh, certainly those small favors granted to you by the teacher over the year has been you know an enormous inspiration to continue on developing myself as an artist i don't know how that has been uh, for you as a monk of course but uh, yeah the teacher is like we say all the blessing come from the teacher mm -hmm. and this is really true um, it's difficult to describe mm -hmm. but this is true <laughs> yeah yeah i understand you have had uh, quite some uh, quite some teachers first and foremost when uh, talking with you i uh, often I, I acknowledge that wow you had some good teachers and yeah. I think that is uh, often very lost. Uh, like the teachers put you into the right perspective mm -hmm. and you cannot do this on your own. Mm -hmm. Maybe your parents or somebody can do this. So they do actually. They oh, do actually. Your oh, parents put you into perspective for life. But except your parents, who will do it really? Maybe you are lucky that you have some special persons in your life who kind of do it. Maybe your partner or even child or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's very rare, and uh, for spiritual things, of course, it's a teacher, and that's why. Can you mention any particular episode from uh, your, uh, I don't know, training? About putting in perspective? Yeah, from, uh, you cannot do this yourself, you say, this what, why you need a teacher. Oh, um, Where you've been put in situations where you probably couldn't find yourself in. Well, for the retreat here outside. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, I went to do it on my own. But then one teacher of mine, he said uh, to me, you better do not. Firstly, uh, if you do it alone, you can go wrong. And secondly, this is the main part, you can go wrong in how you conduct it, and how you, what's your view for it, and how you practice everything. The second point is <laughs> that the, the, well, what comes with the teacher is if you have a teacher for that, not only if you have a good teacher will you not go wrong, but it will go much quicker and much direct because he, he can give all the experience directly. You don't have to go through the experience of, uh, how you call this, miss, trial, miss and try, try and miss. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, hit and miss. Hit yeah, and miss. Yeah. You don't go through this process because he already can transmit to you what has worked through centuries. Mm -hmm. So you short the length of time he can directly give you the recipe of what works. Of course you can try and experiment by yourself. Mm -hmm. But he can at least give you a recipe that works. And most of all, he will not let you go a wrong, wrong mm -hmm. in as far as a, maybe a unwholesome or not healthy mm -hmm. way. He can prevent that. So this is super important. But, but did, did you have any contact with the monastery while you were staying at this winter? No, no, it doesn't work like that about having direct contact. It's more about he puts you in perspective before and after the retreat. Mm -hmm. Or through contact. In the beginning when you have a teacher, the contact is very close, like every day, ideally. Mm -hmm. But then as you grow accustomed to how he will handle you, you can have more and more distance. Like being a child to the parents. When you're born, you need care every day. And the parents tell you how what is right and wrong and how to deal with life. And the more you grow up, the more distance it becomes because you become puberty and you find your own ways. But still, the imprint of what's right and wrong and of this kind of perspective for life of the parents is always in your mind. Even though you maybe in puberty go against it or do whatever, but still it's in your mind. Oh, my mom and my dad, even just the feeling of how to handle life is so deep from the parents. So from the teacher for spiritual practice it will be the same. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes I notice from how I feel often during when I'm alone or something, 
and I'm not quite sure how I would handle a certain situation, there will always be the teacher popping up in your head mm -hmm. and you know how he would kind of handle it. Yeah. And this gives you a guideline. True. If you would not have that, you would, be, you would be very out there by yourself. So that's why a teacher makes the whole thing much more stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when you mention that, uh, the two things. But I can the second thing first, yeah. uh, because you, you, you've, you've been first to, t to tell me how I can meditate. And I actually could meditate. Uh, I've tried many times before, but... Uh, but uh, that's different technique. You had a technique that I could use and uh, fitted me perfectly with my frame of mind. And uh, yeah, there, there, you, you have been known to pop up in my mind from time to time while I'm in uh, <laughs> counting my breaths. Yes. <laughs> Just, uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, so it's uh, this is true. Like for example, with the meditation, when I talk to meditation to you, it's not only about the words, but when we talk, as humans, we always carry a certain feeling of how you conduct the thing, mm. or how the environment of what you talk about is from the fee on the feeling level, you know? That's why then when you do practice or something, it's not only about the words, about techniques, but you carry a lot more mm. with it. Mm. And this is actually, actually, this is the main point, actually. Yes. yes. Uh, but the, the, the first thing that was uh, put in second place from there, because of the earthquake in uh, Kathmandu, you are making these, uh, these candles to light for memory for those, those lost or suffering. Um, maybe you should, well, I think it's getting a bit darker out here and uh, maybe it's time to I can uh, yes. uh, this is for you uh, watching this when you, when you light uh, a flame and you, you do it in memory for people uh, the flame whenever you see it it will remind you of this uh, and this is for the earthquake vi victims have been Kathmandu, in Nepal, where, where have you been? You, you, you are... Uh, yeah, I go yeah. often there. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you've been uh, a very grounded person uh, since I met you. But yesterday you were actually even have worked up for maybe 10 minutes. Of course! Uh, yeah. It's like when you're, it's like when you're, it's like when your like your family or your parents they have a, a injury or they, they have death case. Mm. I mean, for uh, maybe if you've known that they die, uh, then it's different. But if it's suddenly, of course you are, you are, how you call this? Shocked. Not shocked, mm. like uh, also shocked, but you are. Um, uh, it does something with you. Mm. Yes, of course, it's normal. Oh, yeah. I don't believe you, but it must be a, you, you say the, but the main temple you went to, that, that's quite safe, there was some rubble there, but the, Yeah, because it was on a slope, mm -hmm. uh, in the forest uh, hillside, so that's why they won't, and also it's built like very sturdily, so luckily the, nothing happened there, but, yeah. But it, but stay down in the valley or well down in the valley I think uh, maybe half or a quarter or a third or I don't know what how many is destroyed yet it's big uh, this is maybe the good thing that uh, we don't have television so we are not overfeeding ourselves <laughs> from uh, how, how it can be there but I don't know um, is there anything I uh, like to share to uh, the viewers of this video uh, for them to take with them on their, on their life's path. Yeah, um, maybe, I don't know, be kind to animals and uh, humans and everybody. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, okay. The main message is be kind. Mm 
meditate more? Uh, if you can, you yes. You gave that advice to a friend. But actually, if you are really <laughs> kind to all people, mm -hmm. this is the best meditation. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a good one. Well, um, uh, that was a uh, short, uh, hopefully, uh, enlightening interview with um, our monk here. Oh, how did, uh, you, you have two different names, uh, as I do, but uh, which you, you prefer? Uh, the G oh, you can say Cedric. Cedric. Uh, here say, is uh, better Cedric. Yeah. Because the Asian names, well, like, there's no use in <laughs> Europe. It's uh, hard to... Uh, Cedric, yes. Uh, Cedric is good. Uh, to, to even try to write it in Asian is uh, difficult. Uh, yeah, that's what's asked. Hoppa. Hi and welcome. Uh, we are we are getting back here now in uh, to Moosehead Hoof. It's a uh, Wednesday today, the eleventh of February, twenty fifteen, and uh, had a nice evening yesterday. Uh, Cedric the monk came uh, down from uh, the hills where he's been staying over now for almost three weeks, uh, meditating in any kind of weather. Just staying in his tent, as you might have seen in some of the videos, so I'm sure to show you a bit later. So uh, he decided to uh, stay over for uh, the night, get a cozy bed to sleep in, I'd be a bit refreshed, or well, maybe depressed, I don't know. He, he, he is in good shape, so uh, he's not suffering. Anyhow, uh, before he heads back home uh, we decided to have some uh, film session with him and uh, he's now gonna tell something about meditation I believe okay yes. here you go Cedric okay. it's all yours yes. okay so okay when you want to meditate the first important thing is the body you notice your body this is like the root or the basis you want to go back to or that you want to uh, it's like your home and the thing you want to be stable with. So this is what you notice first with uh, your feeling of the body. Then important when you want to meditate, you sit straight in a good position, comfortable position. And uh, this is the work you do with the body. This is what you notice and you come back to all the time. And then with your mind, the work you do is uh, you focus on the breath. This is the one of the basic meditations. So the body is the basis or the root and the breath is what you work on with. And uh, the way you uh, notice your breath, for example, you sit straight, uh, you feel your body, this is where you want to come back to all the time as a feeling, and then the breath gets uh, becomes your... Um, kind of the object you want to put your mind on. Do you focus on the breath? Yes. And uh, this is because... The thing is because if you focus on the uh, body only, you can do that also. Actually in the beginning sometimes what we do is we feel only the body. For example, you know? You sit and you feel only the body. It's possible. But then, uh, as your mind gets calmer, it's easier to follow the breath. Because the body doesn't move very much, you know, when you sit still, it doesn't, nothing happens much. You can do it, it's actually very good, and it roots one. And actually, this is what you want to come back to. If uh, the body, and if the breath is too subtle or too, uh, um, is it not groundy enough for you, you come back to the body. Same if you, uh, if you end up in thoughts or if you notice your mind gets distracted or unfresh, you can come back to the body. It's, quite the, it's the safest place you can go. As, uh, as a human with your mind, the body is the most direct connection. But then to work with your mind more uh, subtly and more... Uh, it's, it's more work if you want. Spiritual work, you know, kind of, is with the breath. And this exists in all tradition, um, you know, like Indian or, or I don't know what Christian, but 
many traditions they use the breath. No, there's Christians that meditate as well. On the breath. Yeah, maybe. But maybe not so much in churches, I think. <clears throat> yeah. This is what you want to use with your mind. So basically, you use the body, feel the body. Actually, in the beginning, you can attune yourself to the body. And then when you feel you get still, you can shift your attention with your mind on the breath. Okay, can and I you hear? feel the breath as a, as a, as a body sensation, you know. Can I, can I ask you how this uh, works when it's sub zero degrees and the wind is hitting hard in your face and uh, snow is whipping around and uh, you are then, in the forest. Yeah, you will choose a spot which is uh, calm, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we were up there and uh, I noticed there were <clears throat> a lot of birds. Yeah. Do, do they uh, do you feel their presence when you're meditating? Yes, I hear them. <laughs> of course, uh -huh. it's nice. Yeah. I think so. So basically, do like this: feel your body, and then breathe. And then when thoughts come, or you, sometimes uh, you sit and you feel for, or I don't know, sometimes you feel the thought process coming, like you think about something else, or your mind goes away from body or breath and uh, follows some thoughts or so, then you have to come back. This is actually what keeps you away, or what we said, uh, you know, the, uh, when you lose yourself, you know, remember yesterday, this is the same. Mm -hmm. Because you're not uh, not in control of your mind, then you know you lose your mind. So you want to put your attention back to body or breath. Mm, I understand. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, to be aware of the body, you can do this twenty four hours, all the time. It's possible, and it's good. And uh, f um, to be mindful of the breath, twenty four hours. It's okay, but the problem is, it's quite a. It's more subtle of a feeling, you know. Imagine like when you um, <clears throat> when you have some work to do or something to notice your body is okay, you know. But to notice the breath and so on is uh, more yeah, difficult. Difficult. The better is to use the breath for the calm situation, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. can, it, you can use it also in other situations. It's no problem and it's good. Anyhow, this is good. Uh, uh, not speaking about good and bad. It's always good to notice your body or your breath or any kind of these. Um, uh, psychophysical things, you know, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, but the the main point is you want to uh, put your attention on uh, something where you can be consistent and which is easy for you to re to recover during the day or during meditation session. That's why one chooses the most easiest to do. Mm -hmm. Body is the most easiest, or one of the most easiest. That's why. Yeah. Oh, great, that's lesson one then. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, there you hear it. If you all want to start meditating, this is a good time to start. It's uh, still, this winter is still going to last a couple of months, so I'm not uh, going to be so much outside, but um, I'm pretty sure this will ensure a very nice springtime. Thank you. In this condition. You see the birds everywhere? I hear them, so maybe the camera will get the sound. Ah, I can see one up there. I don't know if the camera can see it. But... Actually, there's small insects all over the tree and the seeds of the cones, right? So they pick it during the sun time, they pick them. Yeah, they are. They enjoy this weather.